The West Coast also under a tsunami warning. Beaches evacuated. With continuing coverage, earthquake aftermath. Doug Limerick, ABC News. And I'm John Rapp, live on the big island of Hawaii in Kona, where the waiting game continues for thousands of tourists who were were expecting a a stressless and mellow vacation. That turned into a scramble for high ground last night at about 10 o'clock when the first tsunami warning siren kicked in. They joined uh, their their colleagues as they were trying to head uh, away from the waterfront. There was all this uncertainty about this tsunami, and they're standing here now watching uh, the blackness of the, of, of the morning. It's uh, 4.30 in the morning here, and they're wondering what, uh, what is going on down below. From all the reports, it doesn't seem like anything big has hit, but uh, that's, that's, that's not enough reassurance for people by any stretch as they continue to wait. I'm John Rep, live on the Big Island in Hawaii for Como News Radio. And Kent Phillips from our sister station, Star 101.5, was in the evacuation zone along the Kona coast. Got a call that said we had to leave. And that they really, when they tell you about that, there's no, you don't have any option. You just have to leave. And so we got our car and uh, we had to higher ground. And that's where we've been. And we left probably, it's been four or five hours now. And he tells us there seems to be no major damage where he is right now. The biggest waves expected to hit the Washington coast should reach the shores within the hour. We continue our team coverage now with Como's Corwin Hake, who is in Moclips. Well, it's raining hard here about 12 miles up the coast from ocean shores, but it is the expected tsunami that has people bracing themselves. The Moclips area of Grace Harbor County, it's anticipated that the wave height could exceed uh, three feet. That's Grace Harbor Sheriff Mike Whelan. Others say four feet, and a sheriff's deputy just a few minutes ago strung yellow tape across one beach access here, not to close the beach, but he says to serve as a warning that the beach is not a safe place to be this morning. In Moclips, Corwin Hake, Como News Radio. The Washington coast is braced for the tsunami. It's the talk of the Lincoln Street coffee pot. In Port Angeles, we talked to Angela there, one of the baristas, a few minutes ago. I have friends in Lahaina, um, friends all over Maui. I have some friends in Kona, and my aunt and uncle have a condo in Kona, but I don't think they're there right now. Have you talked to any of them this morning? Um, I have not. I have been trying to get a hold of my friends in Maui, but I imagine everybody else in the world is trying to get a hold of them. Now, one of her customers has family in Astoria, Oregon, too. Thousands of Oregonians have been evacuated already. Astoria, Oregon is where we find Como's Carlene Johnson this morning. She is live with us now. And, Carlene, I understand there are long lines at the gas stations there. Yeah, Amanda, David Kanunan is the fill station manager at the Safeway gas station here. He got a call. He said around midnight they normally don't open until 5 a.m. People were waiting, lined up, and everybody is doing what they're supposed to do, listening to the radio and watching TV and following procedures. Yeah, he said about 100 cars were in that line when he finally got the pumps up and on this morning. I've seen a steady stream of cars pull in, but no mass evacuations. Now, the Safeway store right across the lot, pretty full, people coming in and out. I just talked to a young couple who said they got a call at about 1 this morning. They live in Long Beach, and they got a call, one of those reverse 911 calls, warning them to uh, get out of the area if at all possible. So they packed up their two young ones and a couple of sick kids in the back of the car. They weren't happy at all to be looking for a hotel now in the area to stay safe for the night. It is, uh, or some, for the day, I should say, sometime after 7 this morning. It's only about half an hour from now. The first waves are expected to be seen in this area, anywhere from a foot to potentially several feet. Live in Astoria, Carlene Johnson, Como News Radio. You might be wondering about the Washington State ferry system also with the expectation or the uh, the watch for the tsunami waves. No changes in the Washington State ferry schedule. Everything's running as usual. There are some changes for schools along the coast, though, and we'll get to that next. Como AAA traffic and weather every 10 minutes on the force. Mary Whitish is watching the drive. Yeah, we have slow traffic on I-5 southbound now, stretching from just south of Sierra at 104 to 145th, where we have a collision with vehicles on both the right and the left shoulder. So not a blocking issue, but definitely a distraction. A stall westbound 520 on the ramp to northbound I-5 was just cleared from the lane over to the Gore Point, so it's sitting in that little triangle area. Just a minor distraction there. Northbound 405 starting to jam up from the Maple Valley Highway, heading past Park Drive over the Kennedale Hill. And southbound 405, you're going to now find off and on slowing from Beardsley Boulevard past Sierra at 522. Also, no sounders uh, 
rail service between Everett and Seattle again this morning because of that mudslide. So they're de- dealing with that situation. There will be bus service provided. And also Jovita Boulevard remains closed between West Valley Highway and 114th because of the mudslide yesterday morning. I'm Mary Whitish in the Como AAA Traffic Center. Now this forecast is for a partly sunny day today, believe it or not, with isolated showers. High is going to be 51. Morning rain tomorrow, but then possibility of sun breaks in the afternoon and the high of 50. It's going to be a rainy Sunday and uh, windy also, 52 for a high. Right now it's 40 in downtown Seattle. It's now 6.36 at Como News Radio. We want to get back to our coverage of the 8.9 earthquake in Japan and tsunami. Because of the tsunami advisory in Washington, the following schools are closed today. Cape Flattery School District, North Beach, Ocean Beach School District, and Tahola, those are all closed. And running two hours late are the Aberdeen District Number 5, Cosmopolis, Hoquiam, Raymond, South Bend, and Willapa Valley. And again, all these changes are on our website, comonews.com. A few flights in and out of Seattle are canceled today because of the earthquake and tsunami. At least two flights due in from Tokyo are canceled. One flight to Bangkok this afternoon is canceled. As always, the advice is to call ahead. to Make sure your flight is on time. This earthquake in Japan and uh, the following tsunami warnings have affected people uh, all over half the world, really, watching for this thing. Casey owns boats in the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, and they were warned about the possibility of the tsunami affecting things up there. Ga- Casey, uh, what have you heard? Well, I just heard that through a couple of my friends are on the boats right now that they had them pull away from the dock and uh, keep a distance from the dock so they don't get washed up on shore if the thing hit. I heard that that uh, some of the waves had already hit that area. Did you not hear that? Yeah, they, they said a few of them did, but they didn't know if anything was to follow. And what hit up there was not very big. Uh, most of the vessels, you know, and most of the most of the weather in the Bering Sea is generally quite nasty. Uh, so what they what they've seen so far is, is not nothing compared to a big windstorm, but. Uh, but usually they don't get in that close to the beach, and that's that's where you run into an issue with any kind of boat. You see with the earthquake in Anchorage uh, and Kodiak back in the 60s, it pushed a bunch of boats up on the beach, and we're talking boats that are three to four feet long. Casey, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll be we'll be watching the situation in Alaska, all along the Washington and Oregon coasts as well. We also heard from Andy Holloway of Seattle. He was in his home, 45 miles from Tokyo, 200 miles from the epicenter when this quake hit, 8.9. Started really rocking and rolling. The whole house was squeaking. It was too difficult to stand. It was actually an, enough roll to uh, to turn my stomach. He got out okay, but says it rumbled and shook for nearly two minutes. Well, there's going to be a, a, a major humanitarian effort uh, in Japan. You can bet on that, and World Vision already has people on the ground there. Some of our staff that live and work in Japan are actually disaster experts who have responded in places like Haiti and Myanmar themselves. Um, so we're certainly capable, and we can bring in our experts as well. Rachel Wolf with World Vision says they are also watching that tsunami and they're preparing to send help to any other areas that uh, might be hit by the wave. Just looking at some of the uh, unbelievable pictures from the eastern coast of Japan. Fires have broken out. There are full homes just sitting in the water from where that big tsunami wave came in. Huge ships overturned now on dry land. Check it out at Comonews.com. <laughs> Here's Wall Street here a few minutes after the opening, and Brian Gregory is in. Well, it's a mixed opening. The Dow Jones Industrial is down 16, 11,968. The Nasdaq's up a point, 2,702. The S&P 500 is down less than a point, well above 1,294. We'll have more in 10 minutes on Como News Radio. Como News Time, 640. We need to check in with the infinity of Kirkland Sports Desk now with Tom Hutler, who has a recap of another Apple Cup basketball battle. Isaiah Thomas had 21 points, 11 assists, and Washington over comes Clay Thompson's Pac-10 tournament record 43 points for Washington State. The Huskies win 89-87 in the quarterfinals in Los Angeles. The Dogs advance to the semifinals to face Oregon, an upset winner over UCLA. The Cougars may wind up playing in the NIT tournament. In the other semifinal tonight, it's USC taking on Arizona. Also in college hoops last night, the final game for the season for the Seattle University men. They battled to the wire but came up short against Portland State. The Vikings win it 81-71. The NFL and the Players Union racing against the clock at 5 o'clock Eastern time 
deadline deadline today when their twice extended deadline for a new collective bargaining agreement expires. Both sides are far apart. Officials from each side yesterday questioned whether the other side had a serious commitment to end the stalemate. Jeff Pash, NFL executive president and general counsel, says he's not sure if the union wants to get a deal done. I don't know if both sides have an equal commitment. You've, you've, you've heard plenty uh, of, of what I've heard as well. So if, if that's the case, if both sides have that commitment, there's a deal to be made. Turning to baseball, Alex Liddy hit a grand slam in the fifth inning, keying a seven-run rally. The Mariners beat the Angels 10-5 in Cactus League play yesterday. Eric Bedard with another strong outing, two and two-thirds innings, gave up three hits and one run. Highly touted Michael Pineda will be on the mound for the Mariners today when they take on Cleveland. From the sports desk at 10 and 40 past each hour, I'm Tom Hutler, Como News Radio. Como News Time, 641. Como News Time, 644. Como AAA traffic and weather every 10 minutes on the force. Mary White is just checking out the drive for you. Well, that earlier crash in Shoreline, Southbound I-5 near 145th, the vehicles were on both sides of the roadway. Sounds like they've now driven away, but Southbound I-5 is still really crowded from Steer Route 104 through that Shoreline area. As you get closer to Northgate, then both the mainline and the express lanes are wide open to get you into downtown. Northbound 167, seeing some slow traffic as you approach the Highway 18 right up through to the Willis exit. Jovita Boulevard remains closed between the West Valley Highway and 114th because of that mudslide. And now we're getting word of a multiple disabled vehicles with flat tires. Bay Street to Southbound I-5. Sounds like the vehicles are off to the shoulder, but there might be something in the road that's causing all those flat tires and we do have a closure a bridge closure in Bremerton the Manette bridge closed for that ongoing construction work solid it's closed completely until two o'clock this afternoon then they will, will open up one lane for alternating traffic for this afternoon's commute I'm Mary Whitish from the Como AAA traffic center taking a look at the weather now Partly sunny, a nice calm day, maybe just a few showers, according to Paul Deano, our high 51. No more of that crazy wind that we had yesterday or the heavy, heavy rain. Uh, We do have some rain moving back in overnight, but it won't be anything like yesterday. 41, the overnight low for tomorrow. Rain is likely, some sun breaks by afternoon, and uh, steady rain on Sunday. Right now downtown, it's 42. Como News Time 646, and we're keeping track of uh, the earthquake and the tsunami watch in Washington State along the Washington coast. We have Dustin Guy and National Weather Service uh, on the line with us right now. Uh, Dustin, what are you hearing about uh, the, wh- what the wave might look like when it reaches our shores? Well, we still have a tsunami warning, or I'm sorry, and a tsunami advisory in effect still for the Washington coast. Uh, right now we're looking at uh, arrival time some, sometime between 7.15, 7.30, depending on where you are on the, on the coast. And as far as magnitude goes, we're looking at somewhere between uh, anywhere from about one foot up to about uh, three feet on, in the very southern part of the coast. Uh, it will be smaller as you get into the strait. But uh, the bigger waves will probably be hitting the uh, Oregon coast where there is a tsunami warning in effect. And, and, and when, the, when the wave gets into Puget Sound, will it dissipate then? It will significantly dissipate as it gets into the inland waters. In fact, uh, as it reaches the uh, Puget Sound area, we're actually looking at a, a very, very small rise, probably on the order of only three or four inches. We appreciate your time. Dustin Guy with the National Weather Service. Uh, Brian, the movie guy, is standing by. But first, we want to go to Felisa April, who is from Puyallup. But boy, she will have a story to tell about her honeymoon in Hawaii. Where are you, Felisa? I'm at the Turtle Bay Resort from the north shore of Oahu. And uh, Beautiful what ha- place to yeah, stay. Yeah, that's a gorgeous spot. What happened uh, in the in the wee hours of the morning? I saw last night when you heard that this uh, t- uh, tsunami might be coming, right? Yeah, they had a meeting where they had all of the guests come down to the ballroom and they explained to all of us that they were going to um, uh, activate their evacuation procedure as a precaution and that everybody on the third floor and higher would just go outside of their room into the hallway and if you were in a villa or if you were on the second floor, then you would come up to one of those higher floors and um, await the wait. Have you seen any big waves or heard of any yet? Well, it's kind of interesting. When we saw the the, the, the level of the ocean swelled higher, and then, and then it receded really far back, and that's probably happened three or four times. It, there hasn't, to my knowledge, been any water that has come up over the, the break front of the property. So the sidewalks are wet from rain, but not from any wave. It's almost Th- underwhelming to watch, it, but surreal all at the same time, because you hear about how the water gets sucked out or recedes really far, and that is happening, and I have seen it. 
Felisa, thanks very much. We hope that it doesn't get worse now. Uh, the the way was supposed to hit Hawaii here an hour or so ago. And uh, Felisa April, on your honeymoon in Hawaii, I hope <laughs> the rest of it goes smoothly. It's now 649 at Como News Radio. We want to get to what we normally do on Friday mornings as well, and that is talk what's new at the movies. Brian, the movie guy, is here. Battle Los Angeles is one of a few new movies. When you invade a place for its resources, you wipe out the indigenous population. Right now, we are being colonized. Invading aliens attack (laughs) cities around the world. They have L.A. in their crosshairs. What do you think? I have to give the movie credit. There is a battle, and it is in L.A. Now they called the movie Solid Acting L.A. or Interesting Story L.A., then I'd have a problem. Aliens are attacking, that's fine. The the characters in this movie are two-dimensional. The dialogue is ham-fisted. And anything that you find here was done much better in movies like Saving Private Ryan, District 9, uh, Black Hawk Down, War of the Worlds, The Hurt Locker, even Transformers. If you're looking for thunderous, nonstop, cliched, shaky cam action, then look no further than Battle L.A. It's just like watching someone else play a video game, except video games have more depth. I'm going to give it a C-. And uh, another animated uh, film, nine-year-old boy tries to save his mom from Martians in Mars Needs Moms. Broccoli makes me barf. Besides, it looks like brains. Well, you like zombies. Zombies eat brains. Mom, no one likes zombies. They're an abomination. I'm committed to their annihilation. Okay. Well, no broccoli, no TV. Oh, well, that sounds familiar. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, well, it's a wild ride. It's not completely original, but the story's fast-paced, occasionally touching, and it's splashed with some few, a few solid messages about motherhood and family. Uh, the animation is the same kind of stuff you get in the Polar Express, movies like that, which is still, to me, kind of weird on the eyes, especially in 3D. Um, and it's not exactly perfect for younger kids because of certain situations like oh, I don't know, having your mother kidnapped by aliens. Uh, a bit much for younger audiences, but older ones might have some fun. I saw it with my family, so I have four grades. I'm going to give it a C+. Plus. My wife oh. gives it a B. My six-year-old son gave it an A. And my four-year-old son gave it an S for scary. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> We're a little tight on time, Brian, because of all the developing news this morning. But I do want to ask you, in 15 seconds or so, what do you think of this dark take on Red Riding Hood? Yeah, Red Riding Hood. Basically, what they did is they took the Twilight formula and made it wolves instead of vampires. You still got a girl. She's still torn between two forbidden loves. Uh, and then they set it against the backdrop of a popular fairy tale. And then they hired the director of the first Twilight movie. So if you think about it, there was really not even a strand of original thought that went into this thing. My grandmother, what a dull, lifeless, and original movie you have all the better to take your money and bore you to death with my dear <laughs> getting horrible reviews <laughs> it just looked so good yeah. when i saw it on the internet okay thanks brian brian the movie guy every friday let's get to our money minute brought to you by sound kitchen and bath this time brian the money guy is here and oil prices have dropped below 100 bucks a barrel yeah it's the first time in more than a week and this follows the massive earthquake spawning a tsunami that slammed into northern japan but oil down 280. That's about 2.7 percent to 99.90 a barrel this morning. Now keep in mind, Japan is the third largest oil importer in the world. It is still unclear at this hour how much its economy will be affected by the disaster. The Dow Jones Industrials at this point down 10, 11,974. The Nasdaq is up a half a point at 2,701 and change. The S&P 500 has just turned higher, almost a point. Just over 1,296, and the 10-year Treasury note yield this morning is down at 3.37%. I'm Brian Gregory, your Money Minute, 20 and 50 past on Como News Radio. Como News Time, 6.54. Como AAA Traffic and Weather, every 10 minutes on the force. Mary Whitish, what's happening? Well, Amanda, we have a problem in Tacoma. The on-ramp from Bay Street to southbound I-5, a couple of disabled vehicles. Now they're blocking part of that uh, on-ramp. Looks like the right half of it's but traffic able to squeeze by on the left. Also, we're getting word that the traffic signals in the North Ording area, Stay Route 162 at 136, might not be cycling properly. So if it's just flashing red, remember to use that four-way stop rule. Earlier crash on southbound I-5 near 145th is gone, but traffic's still slow going from the county line heading through Shoreline. And it's still a big jam up on northbound 167, stretching from Auburn through Kent. This check on traffic brought to you by American Airlines, Orbitz and Expedia no longer have American Airlines flights to find America's lowest fares, visit aa.com today. I'm Mary Whitish in the Como AAA Traffic Center. Word that water came over the seawall at Waikiki a little while ago. We'll get more on that from ABC at the top of the hour. Our weather around here, partly sunny today. High is going to be 51. Our consumer tip of the day brought to you by BECU, a not-for-profit credit union open to everyone in Washington State. Check them out at BECU.org. Here's her. Maybe you've seen the commercials. You can give your baby or young child the protection he or she deserves with a life insurance policy. It's a real pocketbook pitch. 
Rates are low and the policy coverage will grow. Get it now because your child's young and they'll qualify for a good rate. Cameron Huddleston is a contributing editor for Kiplinger.com. 30-year-old who's in good health is still going to qualify for a good rate, so there's no need to rush out and buy a life insurance policy for a 5-year-old. So Cameron, bottom line, do you want to buy life insurance for your kids? No, you don't because no one is relying on that child's income because most children do not have income unless, you know, your child is some sort of child actor and you're relying on that child's income to support your entire family. And that's the key. Life insurance is meant to pay the bills if something happens to the breadwinners in the family. By the way, many children's life insurance policies are whole life, generally the most expensive way to buy life insurance. More about this on our website, comonews.com. Herb Weisbaum, Como News Radio.